Hi Shane, how are you doing? I'm all right, what are you looking for? Yeah, I can't get the chat box to uh, come up on the side. I can do that, it just comes up in the middle of the screen. Right, okay. And I should I have it on a different setting. Well, I think it's because you're in a uh, full screen mode. Ah, right, thank so you. So let's just go into exit full screen, let's see where the heck that is. Are you, are you I on the thought that's what I might have to do. No, I've not got anyone on with me, I'm just get, getting set up and ready. Why is full screen option not on there? Hmm. That's odd. There's normally an exit full screen mode there. I've not seen it anywhere else. Well, that's what I thought I must have done. Be, well, you are sharing your screen. See, the downside to sharing your whole screen is that that's also going to be there. Um, it's not in the middle of it all. Yeah, these are often better done. Um, So you didn't come down for this, did you? Yeah. You did? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Emma, I, I just happened to walk out and you must have put some of on Zoom, did you? Or Yeah, well, like I just that. went upstairs just to get, can you have a, I mean, I can manage without the chat box if necessary, but it's just nice to have it there. Yeah, you need it. I mean, you're better off with a second screen, though, because then you can yeah, share one sense. screen and put have the other one. on the other. Um, have you got a second screen? No, no. Uh, what time's your webinar, sir? Five minutes. <laughs> well, I'm cutting that, I'm cutting that fine. Um, but last time we'd got it as a shared screen. I wonder if there's. Try stopping your share. No, we're just going to escape. Right. Don't do that. That's my share. Where's your chat box in there? Can I just have a look? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure, sure. Still in the same place now. Is this, are you still sharing your screen? I think that must have stopped. Yes. There is still sharing. Right, so you're not in full screen now. No. Chat box. Oh, it's come up. See, it that's how it should be. Because I, yeah. Because I'm full screen, but it's not. Thank you, Shay. Well, I suspect if you do that, it might change it a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's not happened. So what you did to me and Emma last time we tried to do one, and she was on her machine, I was on mine. So
Hello, folks. Can you hear me? Hi folks, can you hear me? Are you there, Simon? I can't hear you. I need to get you need to get your uh, microphone on. Are you there, Simon? Hi, Simon. Hi there. Is that you, Simon? Hello? Hi, Simon. Simon, can you hear me? Simon, can you hear me? Hi, Simon. Can't get Simon on either. Got what? 
He's there, he's unmuted, and again, it's just not. Let's have a look. Thanks, Shane. <laughs> oh, oh, hi, Andrea. Hi, Simon. How are you doing? Hello. Sorry, I'm so sorry about that. I thought my computer had sound, but it doesn't, so I do apologise. How are we doing? That's fantastic. That's great now. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, I I've, I've, I've dialed it on my phone, Andrea. Fantastic, fantastic. So, welcome to everyone. Um, I think we've got a couple of people online. I know there's some people who've asked for a recording of this afterwards, um, Simon. So, what can you see on your screen? Can you see the slide with your name on there? I can, yes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so um, we've got some of our members who've joined us and some people joining us, no doubt, throughout the next sort of 40 minutes. And we'll make sure this recording is available afterwards if people need to have a look at it. And also, Simon, if um, you know you want to review any of your answers or you can use them in any other, any other ways, if that's okay. No, lovely. So, just for our members that are on, Simon is a business manager with a, a local but very highly thought of um, recruitment uh, specialist team that, is, that specialise in recruiting in the accountancy and finance professions. Um, so what would be really useful, Simon, is if you're able to just tell me a little bit about your background, just how you, you know, how, why you got into financial recruitment and, and a little bit about what you found over the time you've been in it. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me, um, Andrea. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm essentially I've been in recruitment now since, uh, well, for a good 12, 13 years. Um, I joined a local independent uh, recruitment firm in 2007, where I remained there for three years, got my initial training in terms of the financial aspects um, and recruiting for uh, predominantly industry, to be honest with you. Um, so I was, doing, I, was, I was doing part qualified recruitment. Um, uh, very good. And then what happened was my one of my... Um, good colleagues, Greg Parkinson, set up Elevation Recruitment Group in 2010 when and he asked me to come across with him. Um, and I've remained with the business ever since. Right, right. Um, so, I, I, so I've essentially been with Elevation Recruitment for the last 10 years, sorry, last eight years, should I say. Um, and I, I now recruit, have been recruiting for practice and industry across South Yorkshire, Derbyshire and Humberside. Right, that, that's very interesting, Simon, fantastic. Um, now, one of the things that we hear from our members um, so often is that they're really struggling to get the right people for their practices. Um, they're getting people coming through who are technically competent, but people who just, just don't want to really deal with clients, don't want to do the client-facing side of things. Have you any thoughts on that? Well, First of all, there's no denying that there's a general uh, t talent shortage across a lot of skilled disciplines in the market, um, and, f and, and finding top quality accountants is no exception. Um, I, I have personally met a lot of accountants over the years, uh, and the individuals who are technically good and would also be eager for client interaction and would have an active interest in business development, maybe right. offering advice to, to clients, um, and perhaps want to fo focus on the added value piece to clients. Yeah. Uh, are highly sought. Uh, well, they're highly sought after. Right. Um, and, and, and to be honest, we can we can they can be placed in roles time after time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, arguably, in my experience, these candidates tend to be high in confidence, uh, possess well developed interpersonal skills, um, uh, a good degree of commercial acumen, depending on the level of experience, of course. Um, they have uh, they have previously had uh, you know maybe they've uh, it depends on the level they've had experience they've had with the clients they've been working with, yeah. um, and they're also able to discuss financial terms in a non financial way. Right. Um, right. I, I mean, I, I, can, I can illustrate this point. I've recently had uh, I'm mean, talking literally two weeks ago. I had a newly qualified ACCA candidate. Um, just like this from a small practice um, with just two partners, 12 employees. Um, and, and previous to this, he'd done his AAT with another smallish firm uh, before being uh, brought across by one of the managers who set up this new practice. Um, nice. within, just one, within just one week of meeting this guy and picking up the phone to a few of my key clients, I had him five interviews, yeah. um, th three of which were in practice. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea, the practices were, um, uh, I'd say, medium-sized practices, I'd say, um, and two in industry. Um, he was actually offered a role in practice with one of the firms I'd put him forward to, and he had to decline uh, another job offer from another practice and two, um, three second interviews from the other three businesses. So you can see his, his results were quite good in terms of his, of his interview style. Um, 
Mm. And I'll be honest, all three businesses were, well, actually all four of them were obviously quite disappointed that it cut off the market so quickly. Right, um, right. I'll be honest, I'll be honest, attracting people of this calibre faces tough competition from an increasing number of other accounting practices right. um, in the market. Right. Um, my, my opinion on this is, and the reason for this is that there's people breaking, up, uh, breaking off from their employees in practice are set up on their own perhaps because it's becoming yeah. easier and easier, especially with this sort of zero accounting and all the rest of it, it's becoming easier and easier. Um, and the, the you know, uh, books and, and, and ways of doing it to set up on your own are becoming easier and more accessible. Um, they're normally quite ambitious people um, and are attracted to the prospect of joining a new uh, growing firm where they can where they can prove themselves. That's why they're getting enticed by these firms. Um, also, probably one of the biggest threats uh, to uh, losing these in, in, individuals in the market is them be, uh, making the decision to move to industry. Right, right. Um, in, in the hope of gaining exposure in a more commercial management role or perhaps maybe in a group financial accounting role. Right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so, I mean, if, if, if anyone, before we move on to the, you know, the next question, I just want to, to back up my statement there because people might be thinking, where's he got, where, you know, what, is that a sweeping statement or is, that, is there any evidence in the market of that? Um, hopefully, the, the guy I gave you an example of um, was an example, but also, I mean, I did a bit of research on Stephen Ibbotson, director of the business of ICAW, said, yeah. he chose to leave, well, said he chose to leave practice and move into industry after right. building up a wealth of, wealth of experience with a big four firm. Uh, he was uh, an order to an EY and wanted to do something that was more proactive. He explained, I yeah. wanted to get involved with a company that made a product and the opportunity to help drive that business forward. We hear that all the time. When we, when we speak to practice, people from practice, from smaller firms or, or big four, we say, I want to get involved in, with the product. I want to get involved with the business. I want to have something more commercial. Where I can get more involved. We hear it, we hear it constantly. So, you know, you know, I know one of your later questions is, do they go to the bigger firms? I would argue a lot of want to go into industry. Yeah. Um, um, but here's, here's one for you though, where the opportunity could be for smaller firms um, yeah. is, if, is if these individuals are competing against individuals from larger practices like your Grant Thornton, PwC, KPMG, whatever, yeah. for group financial accounting roles, which we do see. Um, if I advertise for like group financial accounting role for a large PLC business, of course I get applications from the smaller practices, i.e. A, a candidate from a smaller practice. Mm. But what they're often, because they lack the international experience and, the large, and those larger audits, they are missing out on these roles. They're not getting them. Um, so as a result, they'll either move to another small practice to get more development or maybe yeah. more experience or perhaps move into an SME business where they're going to be working in, a, in an all-round role where they can utilize their experience. Yeah. Um, exa ex example of this is Jeremy Roberts, a senior manager for BC Openreach, um, trained with a top 20 f firm called Moore Stevens, um, mm -hmm. stating that before heading into industry, he made the strategic career decision to go into a smaller practice first to improve his breadth of skills and exposure to different industry sectors. Right, right. That, that's that, that's very interesting. So you tend to find that it's not just the big firms that are attracting um, attracting the good candidates. There are things that you can actually do within. The, you, there is still a market for small firms like and smaller accountants is to to get good people wanting to join them. Then it's just how you do it, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's two threats, I suppose. There's a threat of being pulled into a, into a bigger firm. Yes, there is that, and I can you know, I'll work for a great firm. It's going to look great on my CV. Everyone's going to have heard of them. But I, I would beg the, the, the biggest threat would be from industry because people are having their heads turned by those more commercial roles. I'm not trying to discount the fact that other practices can offer a commercial role in terms of client. I'm not saying that, but I think that candidates are seeing that move to industry directly would be where they could maybe move up into an FC or an FD ship in the future. That's how they're seeing that as a direct route. But as Jerry Roberts did, there's nothing stopping a smaller firm uh, getting people into the business as, a, as an intermediary move to get that yeah. to get that wider exposure. They might they might use it as a, as a as a middle move to get that to get that breadth of experience. So I think there is an opportunity there as well as well as a threat. Fantastic, fantastic. So the burning question is, what can our members do to attract the right people? What can we be doing? What can we what can we do? Um, well, they could they could they could increase their business presence. Um, I, I, I market uh, vacancies on LinkedIn, for example. Um, yeah. They could they could attend 
uh, or sponsor uh, local networking events, such as yeah. the Young Chartered Accountancy Groups. We've been doing that for years. Um, yeah. Right. We've done YCAG, we, you know, which is the Yorkshire Accountancy Groups. We've done all that sort of stuff, and it just helps get awareness. Um, and this just, yeah, this just gets the, the young and up and coming qualifying chartered accountants more aware. Um, sh should it be the case that a smaller practice wants to bring in someone who is technically good and has the desire to deal with clients, then it is arguable that the best target candidates will be confident and commercially minded individuals from from other, other smaller practices, as I mentioned earlier. Right. Um, as although they will have the desire and ability to be client facing, they enjoy the culture and are accustomed to the smaller accountancy practice environments. Um, the question would be how you would attract these guys in the first place and right. get them to work for your firm. Um, I would say enlist the help from recruitment agencies as they'll be working with or at least have access to passive candidates or mm. be more accessible by creating links with colleges and universities and schools as well. That, that makes sense, that makes sense. And you, you're very big on the, as you were saying to me, to me earlier when we had a previous discussion about creating the, the awareness of your, your company out there, sort of showing that you're in the marketplace, showing that you're a great person to work for, showing that you're a great firm. They're all key things, aren't they, in terms of attracting the right people? I think, I think. Um, I mean, we, me and you were talking about this earlier in, in the last week, uh, so late last week, Andrea, I think, I think, you know, people think recruitment is about letting people know when they're recruiting a vacancy. Um, I, I beg, completely beg to differ with that. I think that that's a part of the process, but much later on down the process, um, if you're recruiting people into your business, mm -hmm. you need to be an employer brand and you need to be attractive to work for. So you need to have done all the groundwork to make people want to work for you. Right, right. Because, because, because I think the problem you're going to have is, in a very competitive marketplace, I we've identified how competitive it is. A, there's not many candidates in the first place. It's very, there's, a, there's a talent shortage, okay? Right. It has been for years. Uh, why? Who knows? It could be a number of things. It could be international competition. It could be demographics. It could be the fact that people are set up on their own and that you're interested in working for, as an employee anymore. Um, it could be the fact that there's a lack of people who are trained because there's not people can't afford to go to university or, you know, it, like I say, demographics is, that, is, is the birth rate gone down in the last 20 years. Who knows? There's all these different external factors, meaning there's less people in the market. Um, so, and there is, there is less people in the market. Of course there is. Um, and, and if you're competing on a, on, a, on, a, on a local scale, that's fine. But then you're going to be competing with a lot of local businesses as well. Um, but, but then people are willing to travel. People are willing to go to work for big firms in Lee City Centre. People are willing to work in, uh, where, you know, wherever to go and work for big four firms or whatever. So, you know, you're competing with not only your local uh, businesses, you're competing with businesses all over, all, you know, all over the UK. Um, and you've got to be standing out as an employer of choice. Um, and, that's, and that's really hard for a business that's smaller, that's maybe not as well known. Um, but doesn't mean you're any less, uh, you know, doesn't mean you're a worse employer, does it? I mean, it, it just means you're not heard of. Absolutely. You know, they, and when you talk about employer brand, is that just as in and creating and developing your brand as a, as a business? Or is yeah, I mean, I, I, more to it in that term? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm talk, talking about employer brand for a second, because it's obviously a completely different topic. Yeah. But, I mean, how can, you know, employer brand is about making your, it's not, I'm not talking about you to, to, to get clients as an accounting practice yeah. uh, because that's, a, that's your brand as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a product offering. That's what services you're offering. You know, you know, do you do audit? Are you a tax specialist? Whatever the, whatever the product yeah. is, yeah. it's about letting your clients know what you can do and what, add, what added value you can do. Employer brand is what you can do as an employer for your employee. So, you know, it's talking about that uh, employee value proposition. So it's like, Find out what your target audience wants as an employer. What do they what What do employees want as a, as a trainee accountant or as a trained accountant? Um, it's the things we've been talking about. It's it's adding value. It's 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 being commercial. It's about working with clients. It's about client interaction. It's about getting exposure with a partner that's that's got X amount of experience. So you can learn from the partners. You can learn. It's it's about it's about career progression, isn't it? It's about if you join our firm in three years, you will be a designated partner or you will be a partner in our firm. Um, and this is how we'll get you there. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'd, I'd advise you to look at um, a company uh, called UHY Hacky. You've probably heard of them. Um, Hacky Young. They've got an excellent career website. I'll be honest, they've got an excellent career website. So, you know, nothing's stopping you. We do it all the time, you know. 
we, we think we're great, but we're not saying, you know, we, we're not saying we can't learn from other people. So we're constantly looking at other career websites about how we can make our, as Elevation Recruitment, as an employer, the best employer we can be by yeah. looking at other career websites. So I'm not talking about your, your, your product brand. I'm talking about your employer brand. And, right. and that's about looking at career websites. So look at, look at your HY's career website as a starting point and just get some ideas. They talk, they've got video blogs from their staff talking about how they got to partner, how they got to senior manager. Um, it just entices people to go, well, if they can do it, then I can do it with that firm, you know? And it's, it's, it's making yourself attractive to the outside world. Yeah. So even even when our members are looking at what they do in terms of their, their websites, having a page about careers on there is a good tool to have um, as a pointer. So even if you're not recruiting, it tells people, it just tells people what your practice is about, what your ethos is, what your values are. It's a good tool to have on there as well, I guess. One hundred percent. I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't. It's probably the most valuable tool because if you're thinking about it, if you're working with agencies and you're getting people coming to your business for an interview, or yeah. you, even if you're advertising, if people still insist on just sticking adverts, under, which we'll talk about in a second, about using job boards or word of mouth or 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 whatever career fairs or whatever the the the, the mode of recruitment you're going to use, which I know we can talk about. Um, What's going to happen is, and I would, if I was this employee, I would go and look at a career's website. I'll go look at your website as a firm. Right. And I'll, see, and I'll see what you like to work for. Do you know what I mean? I'd look at reviews. I'd look at, I'd look at uh, company reviews. I would look at your career's website. And if it looked really average, i.e. there wasn't one, or it was looking a bit bleak in terms of detail, then why would I want to work for that firm? I've got you. If, if the, commercial, the commercially savvy people that, that our members are looking to attract are the ones that would actually do that sort of research themselves. Precisely. Um, so you, your, first, your, first question, your first question to me was, how would, we, we seem to be able to t attract technically competent people, but people who don't want to go client-facing. My, my argument was, well, those kind of people are the people that I'm very attracted to because when I meet them for interview, that's exactly what they want because they're very commercially minded. Then these are the people that are going to do their due diligence and their research because guess what? They know they're going to be highly sought after. Therefore, they're going to choose who they work for. Right. That, that makes sense. So you, sense. so you need to make sure if you're a firm wanting to employ good people, then your offering needs to be that we are the best people you can work for. Right, so you need to have that in the background, particularly if you're looking to expand and grow your firm. Even if it's something you only point people to once every two or three years, you've got it there. That that makes sense. So just just while we're well, on, it, it, yeah, well, exactly. Um, obviously, there's so, there's so many different ways that, that people can recruit. Um, you know, right from it used to be put an advert in the newspaper, and then some of these agencies. Can you just give me a whistle-stop view of the different recruitment methods that there are? Just while you're doing that as well, I want to say to people, we've got the chat box there. If you've got any questions that you want to put to Simon as well, please drop those in the chat box. And when Simon's finished just talking to us about the different methods, what works well, what to be aware of, we'll see if we can get some of those questions to Simon as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, no worries. Um, right, so the, the different methods of recruiting, um, keeping this fairly broad, obviously there's lots of subcategories within these, but you've kind of got um, a job, obviously you've got a job board. Now, listen, I'll, I'll actually list these in order of probably effectiveness as well. That's brilliant, Sam. That's what we need. We need the effectiveness and, and, you know, where to go with these things. So that's fantastic. Right, so probably, you know, the least effective way of recruiting is, 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 is job board advertising. Right. Um, in this market, the market that we're talking about, if it was a, if it was a, uh, I don't know, quite a low-level administrator role, uh, minimal skill required, answering the telephone, bit of scanning, filing. Of course, that is exactly what you do. Um, that is the type of advertising you go for because it's it's simple, it's cheap, it's quick, and you put an advert out and people see it and they apply for a job. Yeah. And um, then things like, are there things like total jobs and things like that, just for us as yeah, well. Yeah. So what I'm, yeah, you'll you'll get calls from these guys. You know, you'll get you'll get you'll get you'll get calls from these guys. You know, you you'll you know these people are targeted to speak to businesses, whether it be practices, whether it be industry, and make 150 phone calls a day. You know, we advertise, we can advertise your vacancies for you. It'll cost you a 250 quid an advert or something like that. Agencies will charge you anywhere between two and a half grand to seven or eight nine grand, depending on the level of your role. If it's a senior appointment, even more than that, yeah. why bother? Just stick, stick an advert out, and we'll we'll do all 
we'll put it out for you and then we'll you can um you can sift through the responses that's what they'll say um you've got you've got one step up from that which is we'll advertise the role for you we'll do a, a minimal sift through and we'll send you the results from what we get and we'll send you the top 10 results matched to your criteria um and these are like you might have heard of them but you've got blue octopus that do something like this right so right. What, what these guys all do is they're like they're like they're like not an agency what they are is they're a job board sifting agency Right, right. They don't meet the they don't meet the candidates, they don't do anything other than advertise it and sift. Okay, okay. And if they cut and if there's no one to sift, they'll set, they won't send you anybody. Um so um so essentially, yeah, and as I say, I want to reiterate the point, it's if you've heard about job boards, they are successful and the reason why they are around, read, monster, total jobs, C V library, indeed, is because there is a place for them. Absolutely, I'm not denying it. Um, when I did junior recruitment all them years ago and I was recruiting purchase ledger clerks at £15,000, it was a very good way to get candidates. Mm, yeah. Because because I would put out a purchase ledger advert, and this was going, we're going back quite a few years when they were probably more effective than they are now, but I would get, but I don't know, out of, a, out of probably 20, 30 applications, I'd probably get three that are okay. Right, right. So, so they have got a place. My argument is, if you want someone technically brilliant, commercially minded, client facing, practice experience, uh, smaller firm, um, are they going to apply? Are they going to see the advert? There's hundreds of question marks over that. So not very effective. Um, the, 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 good, the good thing is, though, they do link to Indeed now, which is very good. So we, we advertise on we advertise on eight job boards, yeah, and all yeah. of those eight job boards feed into link, uh, in, Indeed, and Indeed is a nice hub where you can all the candidates can see the job. So it's a really good, you know, way of, of getting your job out there. And I would suggest that for the cost of 250 quid to put it on a decent job board. Why not? It's worth a it's worth it. It's worth a throw out there, isn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've also got to be careful of the language that you use as well, haven't you? On these boards, to what you're trying as well. Oh, well, yeah, and, and this is it. And, and, and another argument, yeah, exactly. If you if you're advertising on an ad, on an advert, can you really put in what you want? Could you really say you want someone dynamic? Could you really say you want someone commercially minded? Is that is that is that putting people's nose out of joint because you're not inviting them to apply? Um, there's a, you know all this sort of stuff about wording in adverts is becoming quite uh, you know bureaucratic and you've got to be very careful on how you word things so you can't, you don't actually you can't actually advertise what you actually want to advertise for um um and um another quick before we move on to the next point of, uh, of, of uh, next method of recruiting i just want to quickly yep. say one thing if any of your listeners and, and members want to advertise on a job board um and they can um i would strongly advise that you don't look don't do the go to advert which is um, I'm looking for a, uh, I don't know, it could be a part designate uh, senior accountant for, for our established practice, duties and responsibilities, listing out 10 responsibilities and person requirements because you're not actually selling your job. You're not selling anything. All you're doing is saying what we need. You're not giving any reason for that person to apply for the job in the first place. That makes sense. That makes, that's good advice. So the way of advertising 10, 15 years ago was exactly that. The way of advertising in 2018 is sell the job, you know, sell, sell, sell the business, sell, sell why they should want to work for you. It's a talent short market, don't forget. And uh, you're competing with, as I said, the guy I had five interviews for. Why did he choose the, the, the practice he chose? It's because they sold the business the best to him. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, so, you know, I would also argue that, you're not you're not actually the person that's hiring they're hiring you really oh well it, it goes both ways i'm not you know i know you you know, the firm has the choice of who they want to hire but if you want to hire them they they want to hire you so you need to two-way street yeah yeah again no, job board advertising just it, 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 well, it just doesn't give you that unfortunately job board advertising doesn't really give you that model as well as other methods do um so uh that's that so graduate recruitment is a big one at the moment uh, graduate recruitment so you've got you know you cut I, I, you know you put this sort of in the category of people who have qualified a degree they've got a two one or a first degree student so the way you'd get these people is is, is, is get links with the universities um mm -hmm. uh you know uh you know establish links with the with the, uh, the whoever the guy is in the, in the university that that, let, that gives out the students and, and can pass your details on to students so the career advisor that sort of thing to so really get them get, get good links because you'd rather them tell you about good people and they're coming through rather than you having to chase for them so definitely develop those links um, 
Yes. Yeah, um, I, I, in the same vein, you've got A-level school leaver recruitment. So um, I don't know if you've, you know, but Grant Thornton and, and KPMG have been doing this for years. They are. I recruited a lady from KPMG only three weeks ago, and I placed her as a group financial accountant for a business in Sheffield. Um, and she was a first-time mover from from KPMG. She was a fantastic candidate. She was 23 years of age or whatever. I, maybe a bit older, 24, 25. Um, very dynamic, very commercial. And she's been working for KPMG since finishing her A-levels. Right. Um, right. So she didn't have an ounce of practice experience before uh, KPMG got hold of her. Um, but what they did was they did a school careers day and they went down to schools and said, when you finish your A-levels, why not enroll on our program for school leavers? We will pay for your university. We will pay for your ACCA. And you'll be on minimum wage, but you're going to be at the end of three years. You'll be a fully trained accountant with this career, and they've got hundreds of applications. So it's a bit of a sifting process, but they've got people like uh, the lady I mentioned out of it, and she has loads of people in that program who have gone to be very successful accountants. So the story is, you know, get, get you know, basically you can you can access those candidates at a very uh, early age when they're finishing school and then you can get really good accountants from that and you yeah and they recruit on personality they're simply recruiting on grades and personality mm -hmm. okay you know you're, you're, and, and it's about testing personalities testing competence testing the ability to want to learn and it's a different skill set you're not you're not literally looking for uh, uh, qualifications in terms of accounts qualifications you're looking for that uh, ability to learn and want to learn and be a really studious person that's going to do well in your business but they need to have good extrovert personalities because if you want client facing candidates you need people who are extroverted of course um, so uh, another one just to touch on is, is networking events I mentioned earlier about getting your brand out there we've already talked about networking events you might pick up what candidates from that um, LinkedIn social media um, you've got LinkedIn where you can actually pay five thousand pounds for a license where you can and headhunt people from LinkedIn. That's a, we, you know, we do a lot of that, and it's very successful. Um, uh, uh, recruitment agencies, you know, obviously recruitment agencies is, is a really good way of getting good candidates um, and uh, via word of mouth and referrals. Okay. And if people are looking at agencies, because I know you are, you are limited in the geographic area that you work, have you got any hints or tips for choosing an agency? What sort of things should people look for? Yeah, so um, a good a good agency will meet all candidates face to face prior to representation, uh -huh. or by or, or sending them out to interview. Of course, you need to have met the candidate face to face first. It means you're meeting. You, you it means that we're representing candidates. That we actually know something about rather than just pulling them off a off a, off, a, off a, a, a website or whatever. Um, checking credentials, i.e., qualifications and right to work before before submitting them as well, so we know they are. They are qualified to do what they, they say they can do. Mm -hmm. um, references will have been achieved if immediately available in the market. Um, good agencies will not waste your time. Um, if they have people, they will send them. If they won't, uh, if not, they won't send them. Um, it's a case of if you've got people, send me them, you know, and don't just send me anybody, you know, it's one of them. Um, it, it's, quite, it's quite common for a practice to have a good relationship with a particular agency, um, but if they receive speculative CVs from uh, e via email from another agency, it may be worth looking this over as uh, this is how a lot of um, good practice candidates are marketing out to firms. So they might not be all registered with one agency. You know, I would definitely open up to other agencies if they send you good products. Mm -hmm. um, if, my advice would be though, if you haven't worked with this agency before, just in short terms are agreed up front. Right. Um, right. I.e. Yeah, i.e. Percentage, uh, percentage fee for, for placements, if successfully hired, of course. You don't pay a fee if you don't hire them. You know, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Don't get, agencies can't charge you if you don't take them on. So that, that, that's, uh, that's a myth if you think that's the case. Um, you only pay if they actually start with you. Um, and also, there is a rebate term as well. Make sure the rebate term is acceptable. Um, a normal rebate term, this is for a free replacement or a proportionate refund of the placement, is normally 12 weeks. Right. Um, so they get 12 weeks. To, it's in line with the probation period, really, when you think about it. So that's yeah. where that comes from. Um, avoid a, now this is this is an important point. Now I don't I want I don't want to labour it, but I want to mention it. Avoid agencies offering very low fees or free temp to permanent fees after a short time. It might seem like you're getting a really good deal uh, price wise. Um, you know, so and so charges me 20%. He's charging me 10. I'm going to go with the 10%. Um, 
it, 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 my argument is they're cutting corners. Um, it, yeah. They must have cut a corner somewhere along the line because, or they don't value their service. Um, they are aiming to win business purely on offering low fees. And we do know they're out there. We see them. We come across them. Um, they're aiming to win business purely on low fees, and the same goes to industry and practice businesses as well. It doesn't always pay to negotiate a fee to a point where it's not commercially viable for a good agency to work to the, you know, um, as the consultant's time is very precious. It's a precious resource in a market where there is talent shortage, as I keep mentioning, um, with, with certain types of skilled people. They would sooner work with businesses that are, are content with paying certain fee levels. Yeah. Um, for, for, for example, we, we advertise on eight job boards. We have premium LinkedIn licenses. So there's about 40 people in business with a £5,000 LinkedIn license. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got a generous budget for link, networking events and sponsorship deals like the ICAW, experienced long-standing consultants. I've got 10 years experience, as I mentioned, who, do, who know the market really well. We've got well-defined core values to ensure that we have good kind of attraction, strong customer service. We therefore charge higher fees. It's as simple as that, you know, as a specialist. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, certain candidates are highly sought after. So looking at these candidates as a quality product, we can easily place them in businesses. Yeah. And I had, five, I had five potential offers for this candidate. Why am I going to give him up to 10% when, I can, when I, can, I, can, I can market him out at 20% or 18, whatever the percentage it might be at a particular time? Um, and we'll specifically target certain firms we have prearranged acceptable fees with. And I don't think that's unrealistic. If you think, well, that's not fair, why are you, why are you targeting certain businesses with a certain candidate when you could be giving it out to the whole market? Well, well no, because it's not realistic. It's just not realistic. I know full well that it's a good candidate, and I know certain businesses that will, will hire someone like that. If I send them out 10 times, I've potentially put myself in big danger of having 10 interview offers well that's not that's not that's not fair on the candidate or or the businesses yeah. so my 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 first go-to would be the the clients that i've already got re rates agreed with people that i know are going to work with me people that i know are not going to haggle me down to a price which is unrealistic and and businesses that i know we're going to get good business from so that, that that's just purely a commercial viable option isn't it and i think i think uh, and i think if you've got Firms that are listening to this, and members that are listening to this, and they've got clients that they've got, they've got rates to agree with, and and they're doing work for. Well, they're going to be gravitated towards businesses that are going to give them good quality work. And I think that's the same across any business. Yeah. Um, so, so that that's that's what I'd say about about good agencies, really. I think you're so right, there. You know, you've just hit there. I've had to move this. By the time they've paid up for a LinkedIn license, they've paid for all the job boards. That is a considerable investment. And actually, an agency that's doing it on on uh, a shoestring is probably doing no more than putting it on a job board for you. So you know you are really getting what you paid for, aren't you, Simon? Well, I think so. But I think some. And for, the problem is, some some businesses don't see it as that. They just see it as, oh, my value for money is by getting the same product for a lesser price. Well, my argument is, as I'm sure we've ascertained from this conversation, that it's not just about job boards. It's not just about what you can pick off the job board. It's about all the other work. And we've got an employer brand. Our employer brand and business brand, our product brand, attracts candidates because they want to work with us. They think we're a good agency. So we don't just get candidates from advertising jobs. We do do it as a, as a measure. We do it as an extra thing, but we don't rely on this as a sole point of getting candidate attraction. So it's all the, I think it's all about... It's, it's what it's doing all the things together you know that makes that makes sense that makes sense and you've given us lots of different options there not just recruitment but in terms of um right through from job boards right through to to working through network events across the board is there any other advice you would give our members simon what about i mean is there anything about part-time jobs are they are they a growing area um you know mums return to work is there anything there that, that's worth exploring um, yes, I mean, in terms of, um, I'm just going to refer one more thing. The advice I would give, um, before I summarise, is there are, there are three types of candidates that people need to be aware of. There's three types of candidates. There's active, there's passive, and there's inactive. Right. Um, we know the best. We 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 probably ascertained from this conversation that we know the best candidates in the market are generally the passive ones. Yeah, the yeah. ones that aren't logging on the job boards every single day um, and, 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 and constantly chasing agencies for jobs. These people are, uh, they might be good, I'm not saying they're not, but they also might be people who are desperate and, and, and willing to look at anything. And these, I would argue these aren't necessarily the best candidates. Um, the best ones are probably the passive ones. And the, these candidates are happy in their jobs, potentially doing 
um, a really good job for their employer and the employer look, likes them. You know, it's as simple as that. And they'd be very upset to see them go um, and don't want to have, um, you know, and, and because they've got one eye on the market, um, they, they're open to conversations with agencies or they might, you know, they might be looking at job boards periodic or maybe infrequently, but they're certainly going to be open to opportunities if they're presented in the right way, whether it be for progression, location, uh, prospects, anything like that. Um, and we talked about getting more wealth of experience and, and broadening the CV. Um, this is, uh, this is this is where you're going to get the good candidates, these passive candidates, and and it's by doing those other methods that I've talked about, not just not just relying on job boards or or just sticking adverts out in a paper or something like that. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. So it's about that passive, that alter relationship. That's really really good advice, Simon. Um, anything else? I mean, we, we just mentioned both about sort of part timers and uh, and sort of work mums, working mums returning. Anything there? That's any thoughts on either of those? Is it worth attracting them? Do they do they sometimes provide good candidates? Um, I've got um, I made a, a note about um about this sort of when you sort of asked me what advice I could give generally is I'd say successful recruitment is achieved by proactively investing an amount of time and resources into a range of recruitment methods right. rather than just one. Um, an option is to invest in a premium LinkedIn license. I suppose what I'm gonna say is these are things that people could do instantaneously. These, this is what people, these are things that people could do to make a difference in their hiring strategy is what I'm gonna suggest. So an option is to invest in a premium LinkedIn license. Um, you know, like I like to say, you, you know, that's worth researching in, its, in itself. Its use is to build a network and a positive employer brand by posting updates, regarding growth, news about the firm, links to your careers page that I'm sure people might be thinking about how they can make their careers page look really good and exciting um, in order to generate more knowledge around the market regarding what you can offer people as an employer. So I, I can't stress that employer brand enough. Um, I think that people listen to this, what they should be doing is speaking to their HR team, speaking to their uh, business managers, whoever they've got in the business that can do some of this administration for them. Um, it's not necessarily just administration, it's about strategic awareness for your, for your business. Yeah. Uh, in, in, into the market um, and spending the time to design a very competitive exciting looking careers page going into detail about how you're going to progress these people's careers and what the employee value proposition is actually what can you offer an employee to want to work for you um, you can actually engage with agencies this is what I'm talking about is be welcoming of agencies don't see agencies as the bad guy um, if they do I'm not saying people do anymore but I'm saying if anybody is out there it's a bit skeptical and they think they've had a bad experience with them or anything like that um, actively engage with agencies um, whether people like it or not that's generally where candidates are going to go and get work yeah. uh, and it's just the reality because they don't want to troll through job board after job board so they want to use an agency to go and do it for them it's as simple as that um, and when they send uh, literature or speculative CVs to you by email or by, by mail or whatever they're doing, or they, or they call you on the phone, take the call. And if you're busy, just say, look, I'm busy, I can't talk, but send me the CV or maybe hear them out for a minute and say, well, that's really good, exciting, glad to hear that this camera's available, but not for us right now. So what I'm, what I'm saying is the CV is not right or they're not recruiting, politely decline and say that, what you're selling to them isn't right right now, but please, I would love to continue receiving further CVs from you. Um, why would you do this? Because you're engaging with them and you're becoming a client they would want to deal with. Um, and then if they want to deal with you, then guess what? When they get that really good diamond candidate we've been talking about, this, this, this highly sought after candidate, you might be the top five that they will call next time you're, you know, next time this person's looking or, you know, don't you want to be that, top five that they call um, yeah. and then you get you get that call and then you're in the driving seat you can say you know what I am looking for somebody right now actually let's agree some terms together before I get this person in and even if you're still skeptical have a say you know what my time's very precious I haven't got time right now I'm dealing with this that and the other I'm really busy I would like to set up a 20 minute phone conversation though I'll agree rates with you if you take this person on but I want to I'll have 20 minutes on the phone, you know, can we set up a telephone interview and have a chat? If you, and even if you're a little bit unsure whether this person is going to fit the business or not, you can at least, and what this is doing all the time is it's opening up doors, it's opening up chances for you to get first call on these candidates that are so rare. Um, That's clever. Well, you know, we, work, we talk about these top 20 firms, we talk about these top four firms or whatever we're talking about, or so even these firms which aren't top 20, but they're still hiring a lot. It's because they're engaged. It's because they want to deal with agencies. They want to deal with 
employer brands. They want to deal with make themselves look attractive. And um, I met I met a HR manager from a, a one of these. I won't even say the top 50. They're just, they're just a firm with a decent offering. And she said, Simon, you know, we're not recruiting right now, but I want you to keep sending me CVs. I want you to keep talking to me. We enjoy working with you. Whenever you get good people, tell me about them because you never know, we might be looking. And that's so nice to hear. And guess what? Next time I've got a good person, I'll be calling her first, you know? Yeah. And, and, that, that, and she's done herself a huge favour there because she's got me on side. Uh, and, and, and I know I'm only one person, but I'm, I'm, probably, rep- I'm probably representing all the experienced recruiters out there and I think everyone would want that not because we're desperate for business but we want to work with good clients that want to want to engage with I think that's mm-hmm. that's that's obvious isn't it I think we want to work, engage with good people mm-hmm. not what I repeat is dealing with clients that want to negotiate fees down to 10% and want to scrimp and save and, uh, and they've, they've got no employer brand they've got no you know no, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're just not going to engage with with yeah. firms like that because I can't think of a better place elsewhere. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just trying to give you the, the, the both sides of the coin. Absolutely. From what you said there, Sam, this is about getting your employer brand right, getting the, the getting your message out there, which actually, although you're doing that for um, attracting um, you know, employees, actually anybody looking at your website, if they see that you have got a career and you want to recruit the right people, that reassures them in your brand anyway. So it has double effects on that. And the second one is don't close your eyes to looking at any of the recruitment methods that are out there, um, but don't just do it on cost alone, really. Well, absolutely. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know this is an advocate for agency. I'm, as, as I identified, it's only one of the many um, recruit methods um, and, and it wasn't necessarily the top one either I didn't say it was necessarily the, the top one it's not it's one of the top ones but it's not the top one I mean you can't beat word of mouth you can't beat referral schemes um, I would say that set up good referral schemes in the workplace so if you've got a larger firm maybe you employ I don't know you know anywhere between five and ten people or more whatever however big the, the firm is um, there's, there's a lot to be said for that you know get it's for good referral schemes. So if people in the business refer people to you and you want to take them on, then reward your employees. Say, thank you for referring that person to me because they're doing a fantastic job. They've managed the three months probation period. They, they make an excellent addition to the team. Here's £500 to say thank you very much. Um, the £500 is double the cost of a job board. It's, it's a fraction of the price of an agency. Mm-hmm. And why not thank them? You know, why not give them Found a pound worth of meadow hall vouchers or or I know, another uh, another uh, shopping centre voucher near near to you, um, or, or or all this all this sort of stuff. Um, it, it's all it's all valuable, and um, I'd, I'd say uh, I was going to say uh, yeah, and don't forget that, that I talked about university schools and colleges and really opening up those doors as well. Go on, you know, get get involved with these people because if they've got good people coming through as trainees, then you want to know about them and say, you know, we are open to looking at trainees and and don't forget to open those doors as well. Yeah, you want them to speak highly of you to their to their, to their trainees and to their their students, don't you as well? So that's really good. Well, I think exactly. What, yeah. We've about come to the end of what we said we would cover, Simon. Any final words from you, uh, just in terms of wrapping this session up? I think it's been really, really insightful. It's certainly given me some food for thought, and we'll certainly make sure that this is available for, for members. Um, because I know, you know, just looking at who's on there, we've got somebody from the Isle of Man there, obviously, is recruiting on an island situation. We've got a couple of others there, all sort of, you know, recruiting to different size practices. So I just think it's fantastic. I think there's certainly words of advice that we can all take from that. Anything you want to say just to close that session for Simon? No, I just want to say thank you, you know, whoever's on and listening to this, you know, thank you for uh, spending the time, the, the last 45 minutes listening to the, the advice. You know, obviously, any feedback you want to pass on to, um, Andrea, uh, please do. I'd be very keen to uh, have a debrief with Andrea later on uh, and find out what the feedback was. You know, if you thought it was useful, if you thought it was so it was good, but other bits you didn't agree with. Uh, any anything, you know, I, I would appreciate any feedback because and I put this together over the last few days. Put a few thoughts together, um, but you know, like I say, that's just my own opinion. I, I don't able to think this is this is the science. It's just my opinion. No. Um, it, it's just a few thoughts. I'm not saying it's it's the, the letter or the Bible or anything, but it, it's certainly stuff that I've seen evidence of, and, and I hope that, that it's been useful for people. But I think by doing it, it's going to do you any harm. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, and I know, because you're sort of based in the South Yorkshire region and sort of go out towards Lincolnshire, so obviously it's not a service that you've built up to everyone, but I guess, you know, if people wanted to have a chat with you about things or any advice, I'm sure you'd be more than happy to, to chat with them. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, by all means, you can uh, share share my uh, uh, email address or contact details, Andrew, and more than happy to help where yeah, possible. I'll link in with you. That's fine, I guess, as well. Absolutely, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on there. Um, as you see, my, my, my name's on the on the slide, and Andrew's obviously got my contact details. Um, but uh, yeah, by all means, get in touch if you if you need any. If you've got any, any last minute questions, you think of after we finish the, the webinar. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Simon, for your time, and thank you for joining us. And on behalf of all our members who've joined us and have listened in and out throughout it, thank you to you for your time as well. Thanks, Simon. No, you. you. You're more than welcome. Thanks ever so much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye all. Okay, folks, I will make sure that this is available for you um, after this. Um, if you want copies of it in particular, send them to you. Just drop me an email and I look forward to speaking to you all soon.